Hello, my name is Brantley Greenlaw. We're here in the McDonald Center Studios in McDonald, Tennessee, Gospel Ministries International. And with me is Steve Rawlings with Leading to the Light. And uh, we actually had a chance to meet with him and record a previous session on what it took for him and his family to move out of the United States and transition from a, a U.S.-based uh, life uh, to doing mission work for God. And today, I'd like to uh, continue a little bit with that focus. What yeah. actually was that transition process, and how did it how did it go with with what you thought would happen versus what actually happened? And and what would you suggest to our viewers that would make it easy for them to become a missionary and transition to doing missionary work? Yeah. Well, the biggest transition for us was going from a Western culture to an Asian culture. We hadn't, I mean, I had no experience with Asian culture other than Asians that grew up in America. And as we got there, and, and the pastors are asking me to help them with their projects, well, I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. And one pastor came to me and said, I want to print the great controversy. And um, I said, okay, how much will that cost? And he said, $5,000. So I put out a letter in two weeks, I had the money and I said, we're ready to print. And he said, well, first I got to find a translator. And I'm like, you're telling me you need $5,000 and you haven't even started. And so there was a lot of miss. I didn't know how to ask the right questions and they probably didn't know how to give the right questions to work together. And so it was a long process. It was probably two years of struggling like this. There was always culture issues that but I always said I'm in your culture I'm just gonna um, humble myself pray a lot more than I have been and just see how God works this out and so many situations would come up like this where the culture is um, it feels like they're taking advantage of you at times I felt like I'm just their ATM machine and I didn't come here with any money, but they keep asking me to give them money and find money. And it just, I was going through a little process to settle in. Well, after two years, right around two years, all of a sudden they started calling me. What do you think about this? Or we were wanting to do this. What do you, do you think that's a good idea? Or when I would go to the Bible school, um, I would, it's a six and a half hour drive from where we lived out to the border to the, the Bible Medical Missionary Training School, I'd pull in, instantly two or three of the students would be at my car, I'm not even out of the door there, saying, teacher, can we wash your clothes? And I'm like, I just got here, I don't think I have any clothes ready to wash yet. Or <laughs> they would be out washing my car with a little, a little cloth and a cup of water, and they would wipe that whole car down, and they just really, love to have work with me and I really started feeling like part of the team but that was a big it was a big trial at first and I kind of kept it to myself I I'm pretty non-confrontal and um, I didn't really want my wife to know all these issues about how I felt taken advantage of she's more she would have taken care of it for me but um, I just wanted to I mean, I didn't want, I wanted to find out how, how we could work together. A lot of times when I, I watched the missionaries, different missionaries come over to the country and they started a school or an orphanage or some kind of project. And then they hire the locals to take, to do the work for them. And I see that every time they leave, the locals don't do any, they don't know what to do or they just wait. Mm. And, um, or they don't agree with what they're being asked to do and there's conflicts and nothing's really going forward. Satan is able to shut the project down almost before it gets started because of all the conflict. And so we decided we're not going to start anything. But when God sends us somebody mm -hmm. local that says, I have this dream, God, God's impressing me to do this, we're going to stand beside him and run with him and help them any way we can to expand the gospel for, or expand God's kingdom. So this process, you, you had to learn to kind of integrate with 
the culture there? Yeah. Uh, when when did the light bulb go on as to how that worked? Well, it was when that when when one of the pastor called me and said, "I'm thinking about this. Do you think it's a good idea?" Now all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I was at the same planning level as them. I wasn't just the ATM machine anymore. I was actually part of the plan the structure and the organization. And what was that first project? Was there a project um, involved? Let's see. Yeah, I think we were trying to work on um, self-supporting work. See, when I got there, I was all about self-supporting work because I knew we can't just keep asking for funds every month for the mm -hmm. same things. And so I would, I would have meetings with this pastor and I'd say, well, what about self-supporting work? And he, he didn't get it. See, he's from the Karen people group and the Karen people have been going through genocides since 1949, and they don't know if they're going to have a home tomorrow. They plant gardens, and the Burmese army comes in after they harvest, chases them all away, and steals their food. And so the idea of, I'm going to start a self-supporting work, has never entered their mind. And this is still happening today. It's it? still happening, but um, I'm happy to say after five years, that some of them are getting this idea that we need to be self-supporting. And so I would, ask, I would ask this guy, I'd say, hey, or the pastor, how about if we do this, kind of towards self-supporting? And he'd, he'd say, I don't, why? Or he wouldn't understand. So I would just quietly say, okay. A week later, a few days later, I'm coming, I, we're talking again, and I, I approach the same self-supporting work from a different angle. Still doesn't get it, so I wait. I, I, I went through four times, of four different angles to come to, what do you think about self-supporting work? What can we do for that? And he just didn't, it was always meeting, like meeting a wall. They didn't, he didn't really, wasn't interested. Well, a few, after those four meetings, the next time we met, he said, I have this idea about Starting this, um, I think at that time it was we were going to start some little shops in villages where the Bible workers were, and they would take care of the shops, mm -hmm. and that would that would take care of their their salaries, hopefully. And all of a sudden, I'm go, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's go with it. And so that's the way. That's my personality. I don't know if everyone can do it that way, but I I don't mind waiting on God to inspire them because when they're inspired. If I'm stuck in America, things are still going forward, and all I have to do is talk to the people over here who actually have the means to help the people over there. So there's a way to work with people in different cultures. Yeah. To first, yeah. what, understand their culture, yeah. understand their way of thinking, Definitely. and then uh, try to fit and mold into that. Yeah. Rather than come in and try to use the Western culture. This is my way, and yeah. you, I'll teach you how to do it right. But... Even when we first got there, we didn't know the language. It was a, we had to put our full trust in the local person to help us establish mm -hmm. ourselves. We had to trust this man to take us around and help us find a home. We don't know what he's telling them or what, what's going on, but we really relied on that local person who knows the way around. And it's twice as hard when you don't understand the language at all. So, um, so it takes time to adjust to a new culture, um, but it's way more successful if you go at their pace and, and their way instead of trying to bring your foreign culture into it. And, and what was the process that you went through, uh, I guess the mindset or what did you need to do in terms of with, with God in this process? Yeah, Were you was... on your knees a lot while this kind of the, before the light bulb went on and how to work with these people? What, what, what did you do spiritually? It, was, it felt like I was on my knees all the time. It was a constantly, I was feeling bad about myself. I was thinking these people are taking advantage of me and I had to pray, I had to be patient and just wait on God. And, um, and I, I just kept, re I just said, you send me here with nothing, you have enough money to take care of them and me. So I'm not going to worry if they make me pay for something that we should have split the cost on. Um, like we were, the house we're, we're staying in with a Thai couple, they had just built it. They needed power to come to the house. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but, but they had sold me a little, or our ministry, a little piece of land beyond their house. 
they, uh, he said, you need to get power to your house. And so I was going to pay for all the poles and all the wire to take the power to my house. And as it runs by his house, he'll just string a wire down to have power at his house. Does that feel like a Western yeah. way of doing things? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it, it really didn't. It was hard. I said, okay, well, he can't afford it. If God gives me the funds, I'm not going to complain. It feels wrong. We should have worked out a deal to split that cost somehow, but it's up to God. And I just have to humble myself. And I, it was it was a... It was that was probably a good two year process. And and did you involve your family in this prayer time? Yeah. How, how, what did it look like for a family life? To a certain level, I wanted them to be aware of cultural differences, mm -hmm. but I didn't want them to like um, go and try to fix it and get mad at the locals and try to just. just I wanted them to just wait like mm -hmm. I was waiting and. And we did. We waited, but it was a little stressful at times when I would share a um, an issue with my wife, and she'd want to go out there and have a talk. <laughs> so we, but we just got through, and she, we all grew a lot in um, trusting God and character development. So, and I think that's that might be the number one reason God sends us, just to show us where we need to change, mm -hmm. make changes in our own life. So it's a, it, it became a blessing for you and your family to actually go and get involved in this missionary work and understand the cultures and start, start uh, reaching people through the projects and assisting the pastor. Yeah. So the first, <clears throat> the first project that you were actually involved in, tell us a little bit about that and what it took to get started. Yeah, well the first project I might have mentioned in the first video, I can't remember, was the pastor had asked me to help him start a school. Mm -hmm. And the school was about teaching the, his workers. He already had 300 workers at the time, or almost 285. And he really wanted them to be able to use the health message as the entering wedge for the gospel. Mm -hmm. The Bible workers were telling me we go into the village and we finally talk someone into um, reading the Bible with us. And after five minutes of reading, they just stand up and walk away. And we don't know why they left. They had no explanation. And so they were having, the pastor was having a hard time convincing his workers that they need to start with the health work. And so he had brought like 15 people a year to his house for 30 days and gone through the principles of the health work as the entering wedge, but they never applied it and, and they didn't buy into it. They didn't, they didn't want to do it. So we, want, he, we needed something more than a one month program. He couldn't afford more. Um, the, the people in Thailand don't have money. The, the pastors there, the gospel workers have great plans for God, and, but they don't know how to get them done. They don't have the funding. And so I think God sent us there mostly just to be able to share with the, the Westerners what the needs are, to support the gospel, to finish the work in Asia that they can't do without us. But as we're building this school, we brought the people in. The first year, um, I think it was 2013, and we had 55 students. And the first five years, the, what, the, what the man from... Um, Canada said he would cover was just his workers going through the program. And um, they would come, they would be there for six months of Bible and practical classroom medical missionary work. And then the last four months, they would split into groups and they would go into the villages and they would um, practice what they've been learning. Well, on Friday morning, we will we'll take, we'll divide the students. We'll say, your group's going to that village. Your group's going there. And don't come back till tomorrow night. You figure out what you're going to eat and where you're going to sleep tonight. And they're like, wait, we don't know anyone in these villages. What, what do you want us to do? And so we tell them, you just go to the first person you meet and ask them, is there anyone sick in the village? And for sure, they're going to know someone's sick. You go to that house and start and see what God does. Sunday evening, they come back Sabbath night. Sunday evening, we have testimony time, and every single student is up 
enthusiastically telling how God blessed them. And they, the one group said, we helped this lady, we gave this lady a hot foot bath and a massage, and she said we could <laughs> sleep under her hut. And the huts are built up, and there's a place to sleep okay. underneath. And so another one said, that family wanted to uh, have a Bible study with us. And they were just learning that it wasn't about what they could do. They didn't have to go with anything, and God would provide for their needs. And so God taught us that, me that, in my family, and so we wanted to let the locals know that they don't need to rely on the foreigners to fund their projects. God will do the same for them. But we can work together and, um, and, and experience the joy of God's blessings together. And so that's really our vision and our mission, and um, that's the way we work. So in these projects, how describe to us how you saw God leading step of, every step of the way in the formation and the development of these projects, the missionaries. Uh, you know, God, it's his work. How did you see him leading? How did you see him working? Well, almost every time, <clears throat> I can tell a little story that, that I'll say every time, the, the way we saw God working is because what was put before us was impossible in our eyes. Um, when I first met the pastor, and I agree, agreed to um, to help him with his school, mm -hmm. and um, and to start working with them, he said, "You got to go back to the states and tell them what we're doing here." And um, so I said, "Well." See, we only had $35 in our bank account, and I was thinking, how can I go to the States with $35? And, um, but each time I would meet, for the, over the next two weeks, he would just kind of aggressively say, you got to go back to the States and talk about the projects. And I'm like, I've, I don't know what to do. And I say, well, maybe we were just there six months ago. We could probably wait a few more months. And, but one day after meeting with him, I was driving home, and I just was thinking, maybe God's trying to teach us another lesson. What could we do to go to the States with $35? So I got home, asked my wife, what can we go, how can we go to the States with $35? And um, I mean, we had a terrible plan. We thought, well, maybe if we buy a bunch of the, the handbags, the handmade bags that the Korean people make and fill our suitcases, we could go back to the States, and we were pretty comfortable that we could probably sell enough to, to uh, fund our trip. But $35 won't buy enough bags to fund the trip. So we're, we're thinking we're going to have to make a business plan and then find someone to give us a loan. And um, we don't know who to ask this, but we thought, well, how much do we need? We're going to need money for the bags. We're going to need money to travel when we get there, and we're going to need ticket money for our whole family, which would come to around $5,000 for four round-trip round tickets. And but we thought, well, if we don't get the ticket, that, that's a huge amount. It was like $10,000. We thought if we don't get the tickets, then we don't need the other money. So let's just focus on getting the tickets. Let's ask somebody for the tickets. Well, I don't know, maybe four months earlier, a family had come to Thailand to that same church, we had brought them to our home and um, spent time with them, spent four days with them. They had four children, and they were there for a while, and so we did a lot of with them. We didn't know them that well, but um, we thought, well, let's just write them a business proposal and see what happens. And um, so we wrote them our plan. We, we were asking for $5,000 so that we could come and sell bags, and we'll cover the trip and pay them back. Next morning, they wrote us back and said, it sounds like you'll spend all your time selling bags and not have any time to talk about the projects you're doing. We'll just buy your tickets. And I'm like, well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Is that how it works? <clears throat> and so we're thinking, well, God must really want us to go then. The pastor's been pushing us. Here's the money to go. We better make a plan on what we're going to do. And we, had, we decided we'll stay three months. We opened our calendars. We said, what camp meetings could we go network at? And then what churches are between those camp meetings that we could speak in? And what homes are between those churches that we could stay in? And so we wrote an email to every person along that 
route. And um, in two weeks, we had responded and everyone was available. We only had to spend two nights unaccounted for in a hotel. We didn't know there were two nights. And so this is the way, this is what you can do with $35 if, <laughs> if God's involved. Wow, well, wow, praise the Lord. Yeah, so that's what we're learning. We're just learning that um, God, God has the reins. We're just holding on. He's, right now, we'll get to this maybe later, but every day we have an opportunity to expand God's kingdom. And it takes a bill. It might take a little clinic. It might take a church. It might take a new radio station. There's, there's opportunities. There's co consecrated gospel workers waiting for a chance to reach a greater amount of people. And we need that chance. They, in Thailand, there's, there's 67 million people, and at least 64 million of those people have never even heard of Jesus. Who's going to tell them? How are they going to get to the masses when they don't have the funds to um, build the structures to, to attract the people. So that's, that's, that's our purpose now. We don't know. Um, I mean, I can talk and talk and talk about individual workers and how God's blessing them and how we're affecting. We're affected also because we're, we're walking right beside them. Um, in, in our Bible school, one of the Bible, the same Bible worker that told me when he goes to a village and sits down, they walk away after five minutes. Mm -hmm. After he took the class, he told me, now when I go in the village, the whole village comes out to see what I'm going to talk about. I mean, what can, how can I help them? And um, he said, now they ask me, where did you learn how to do this health work? He says, right here in the Bible. Do you want to see it? And... Um, I, and so they say yes, and, and he'll give them a health message through the Bible. And then they say, we didn't know that that Christian book said all that stuff. What else does it talk about? And now the wedge has opened the way for the gospel. And that's yeah. the way our workers are learning how to work. And that's, um, that's the, kind of the foundation of all the projects we have is to apply the wedge and open the way for the gospel. And um, this same worker, the same Bible um, worker, he decided he was going to go start a school, um, open a new territory that didn't have any Adventist presence. Mm -hmm. So he went out to this village, and uh, it's not far from the border, but it's in Myanmar. And... Um, um, he went there, he asked the, the local head man, can I use that land? It's about a quarter mile outside of the village. I want to start a school, he said. Well, the local head man said, you can use the land for a school, but no one will come to your school because we know you're a Christian and we don't like Christians. And he called us. He was kind of discouraged. He's like, I don't know what to do. I want to start a school here. And he says, no one's going to come to my school. What should we do? So... Um, we decided that we'll send four students from our Bible, from our medical missionary training school with him to the village and they'll do a, a health expo and just go around and, and talk to the people and meet their needs. And so they did that. And after that, he, had, he got 14 people to come to his school the first year. Well, during that year, while he, they're he has his school going. He's going still into the village and taking care of the need, health needs of the people. That second year, he had 65 students came to his school. And we, now we, I think there's seven teachers, and he's up to like 90 students that are hearing about Jesus every day. And the families are being affected and hearing the gospel because of his willingness to just go to a place that never heard. And so we have each, all our students are, they're ready to go. They're ready to serve and focused on eternity. We, it's a blessing to be able to um, talk about them and um, just share what God gives us. So what I'm hearing from you is that we as God's people need to have a willing heart more than anything else, willing to go and to serve and to do God's work rather than think that we need to have a lot of money mm -hmm. or we need to have all of our debts paid off or we need to 
I have a, a super good education. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to be a doctor in order to go there. Um, this is not what I'm hearing from you. I'm hearing that God is working through the simple and the willing heart. It's, he definitely can do that. I'm not against all those other advantages and sure, skills. Sure. I think they, they can maybe create more opportunities for God to work in an even bigger way possibly. But if you have a willing heart, even he can use me. So I know he can use anyone else. So Wonderful. Uh, well, um, in these projects that you've been involved in, are there, I mean... Uh, did they just kind of grow on their own? Did they require some nurturing? Um, I, I know that you've uh, kind of put together some orphanages mm -hmm. or and some educational, some schools as a result of the Burmese troops coming in. Uh, I, I don't know if those are the same story, but it's related. But yeah. tell us a little bit about the schools there for the children Yeah, so the, those projects. So we don't have a long-term plan. I tell the people, I'm going to work here until Jesus comes. But I don't know how long that is, and I don't know what my goal is in the future, five years. But what's been happening is, as we make the effort, if we prepare ourselves, God opens the door, and we have to just choose to run in, and we usually just run inside. Um, one example is a Baptist group had come, had lost their funding on their school. They had 90 kids and about seven or eight teachers. So they came to the pastor and asked him if he could take over the foundation or the school. Mm -hmm. And he called me and said, should we take over this school? Well, the budget's $22,000 a year. And I don't know where that's going to come from, but how can we say no? How can we let this almost 100 people carry on without hearing the Adventist message. So I said, we got to do it. What, what else can we do? Um, so he went to the group. He, he met with the, the head man of the village, the teachers and the parents. And he said, we'll take your school, but it's going to be an Adventist school. I'm going to put all Adventist teachers in it. Is that OK? They said, we don't care. We just want these kids to get an education. And so we took over that school. And that, now we've expanded again. And um, everyone, everything that, I mean, we don't, we just take what's happening that day. Maybe today um, we find out about an area, we just, we are working on a project right now in an area where there's um, 300 villages out scattered through the mountains that have never heard about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we're taking two of our students from the Bible school, they've been, they got married Two years ago, but we've known, I've known them since they're 18. Now they're in their 26, 27. We've been nurturing them to be leaders in the foundation, to have that vision of the foundation. And now we're placing them in a uh, village that overlooks all these, these 300 village, mountain, in the mountainside. Mm -hmm. We built a church, which we call a community center right now because there's no, no one to worship in the church. And we actually put uh, seven sewing machines in it, and we're teaching a sewing school. Um, rainy season came, or we will have a building for sewing. In the, after rainy season, we'll, we started, but it's not completed. So the, number one, we set a house there. Then we built a church, and then we're going to build this clinic slash um, sewing school room. And that'll be the hub. Our workers from the Bible school can come and work with them and go out. And um, the, if we devise a way to reach a soul for God's kingdom, we're promised angels will go before mm -hmm. us and open the way. And I want to work with angels. So I'm going to, yeah. every day, I, if I get an opportunity to, advise, to devise a way to maybe reach one more person, I have to do it. And God just keeps it going. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Mm. These are such wonderful uh, stories that you're sharing with us about the mission work and how God is leading and God is working uh, for the salvation of souls in, in uh, Thailand. Um, we are going to have some more time with Steve coming up. Uh, he's going to tell us what's happening today in, uh, in Thailand and also what's coming up in the future. So I would invite you to tune in with us again for another episode of Mission Work and Mission Experiences 
and how God is working out there in Thailand.